For project number six, we're going to go through some of Photoshop's image correction tools. When you download this project, it's got a variety of different JPEG pictures that all have some different kinds of problems that most professionals try to avoid or at least try to correct. The first one, this image, is going to talk about how to do some touch-up and restoration to an old photograph. So let's get started. I've opened it up. I'm going to open up the Rosman's JPEG by dragging it down to the Photoshop icon, letting it open from here. And since I've got a lot of different layers moved around, I'm going to go up to Window, down to my Workspace, and I'm going to reset the Essentials. And that will put everything back into place, off to the sides, the way I like it. Uh, let's see. Also, if you ever need to zoom in for anything, you can go up to View, and then select 100%, and that will zoom in to 100% pixel for pixel. The first thing we're going to do is a Gaussian blur. If you zoom in, you'll notice that there's a good bit of grain on this image. To get rid of the grain, we're going to blur it just a little bit to remove all these little extra spots and texture. Go to Filter, down to Blur, choose Gaussian Blur, and you can see if Preview is checked on, you get a little radius that you can change out the amount of pixels. Now if you do it too much, it's going to be way too blurry. For this one, we'll make the pixels to 1.5, and that'll blur it out just enough. And click OK, that'll apply the Gaussian Blur to our image. Since we blurred the image a little bit, the next thing we need to do is to sharpen it back up. I can scroll over here and see her image and see that I've lost a little bit of details on her eyes and around her eyebrows. So go to Filter, down to Sharpen, and we'll choose Smart Sharpen. In this dialog box, we can also open up the Highlights and Shadows and get the full idea of how this should be set up. The setup for this one should have an amount of 200%, a radius of 1.5 pixels, will reduce the amount of noise by 20%, and on the highlights we're going to set the amount of fade down to 75%. Everything else we'll keep at 0, 50, and 1, and also 50 and 1 for this one. This will sharpen up our image just a little bit. We'll say OK. And if you want to go back and forth to see the before and after, you can go to Edit, Undo, and Redo. And it sharpens it up just a little bit. Now let's working, work on getting rid of some of the scratches that are on our image. To do this, the tools we'll be working with are found in your toolbox, and there's a variety of them that are looped together. If you click on the little um, Band-Aid looking one, there's a spot healing brush, a regular healing patch, content aware, we're going to start off with the Spot Healing Brush. This brush works like every other brush, so at the very top you can choose a different size for your brush and a hardness. We're going to keep our hardness at 100% and we'll set the size to about 20 pixels. Some other things you can do with your brush is what type of transition or cover-up it wants to be. The type we're going to use is a proximity match. This means when we use our brush, it's going to look around the proximity of the area and try to max, match those pixels as close as possible. I'll zoom back out. Now if we zoom back in to the right side of her face, you can see there's some little spots here. All we're going to do is to click and drag over it, and when we release, these spots go away. You may need to zoom in and out to try to find all the little ones, but try to get as many as possible finding each little area. For now, we won't worry about the major cuts just yet, just the small spots. I think we've got them all, so let's choose our Healing Brush tool next. With the Healing Brush tool, this allows you to select the area that you want to affect. With this one, we're going to get rid of the little spot that's on our face. Unlike the other tool, we have to select an area, so I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, about 9 pixels. That'll cover up that little spot right here. Hold down your Option key, click off to the side, then I can let go of my Option key and click right on top of it to get rid of that one little spot. Back out, Command-0. Now let's work on some of the major lines that are down at the bottom. 
Command and the plus sign will zoom back in and I'll go down to this bottom corner. Another kind of tool to use is your clone stamp tool. This one is located underneath all of your other tools and it looks like a little old-fashioned stamper. If you click and hold there is a pattern stamp but we just want to use the regular clone stamp. This also works like a regular brush so I can change my brush size to about 25 pixels excuse me, about 80 pixels and the hardness of about 25. So this will give it a nice soft edge to, um, to blend everything in with. As with the other tool, you need to select a source to pick up your pixels from. Hold down the Option key, click just above this line, right about here, and that'll select that as the source. I can then move over and click and drag and erase away that line. We can do the same thing for the other side. To get rid of this area, hold down the Option, click in this area, let go of Option, and then you can paint in the other pixels. If we go up to the man's coat right here, we can connect that edge as well. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, say about 30 pixels, with a hardness yeah, about 33%. That looks good. Hold down Option and select just along this edge. Clicking right there. When I let go, you can see the preview of what it will look like. And I'm lining up that edge right here and then clicking multiple times. I'm not clicking and dragging, just multiple times clicking to reconnect that particular area. Another way of quickly filling in the area and getting rid of this I'm going to use my lasso tool, regular lasso, and select this scratch area. With it selected, we can use Content Aware to fill in everything that's around it. Go up to Edit, down to Fill, and instead of filling it in with a solid color or a foreground color, choose Content Aware, say OK. And what that did was look for similar pixels that were, that were around or aware of the content that was around it. Let's do the same thing for the other scratch. Highlight it. Use your lasso tool to select that. Go up to Edit and Fill. Choose Content Aware. Say OK. And it filled in that scratch as well. Let's do the same thing for this final scratch on this side. Highlight it. Edit and Fill, choose Content Aware, and say OK, fills it in. We can even get rid of this little spot right there. And there we have it. When I zoom back out, now it's fully nicely restored. We can save this as a TIFF file format. Go to File, Save As. We'll keep the same name, but under Format, change this to TIFF. Then we'll say save, ask for more dialog box or more options for this, we'll say OK to those, and we can close out and go to the next image. Now let's correct some lighting problems with the other images. If we go back to our footage, we need to open up the Buffalo JPEG. There it is. I'll drag this into Photoshop. The problem with this one is the brightness and the contrast. We want the whites to be much, much brighter. So in order to adjust this, let's go up to Image, down to Adjustments, and choose Brightness and Contrast. You get a variety of sliders. Make sure your preview is turned on. Set your brightness slider to be 35. You can see it brightens up. And also your contrast slider to be to 10. That looks much better. We can say OK to this. Remember to save it, save as, and choose TIFF as your file format. Save and say OK to any of the extra options. We'll close this one out. Next, let's open up and deal with the tonal range. Going back to my desktop, open the Chef image. 
in the Photoshop. I want to be able to see my histogram panel. So go to Window, down to Histogram. A histogram shows you a range of lights and darks. And if there's ever anything that's going out of range, it'll give you a little warning up at the top. Within the histogram, we can also see, let's see, whoops, bring it back up, sorry about that. We'll drag it off and get more options. We can also see an expanded view that shows all of the channels, and I can choose individual colors, such as the RGB, the reds, only the greens, or only the blues. If you click on the little warning icon, that will reset the icon for all of your channels. In order to adjust this, let's go to Image, Adjustments, and choose your levels. And this will give you a preview of how it should look. So to fix this image, we want to move the left-hand side, this is our darkest, to right to the beginning of the curve. We want to move our middle slider till it's about one point five. Right about there. And the lights are actually okay. We could say okay to this. So here it was before, here it is after. Go to File, let's save this one as a TIFF. We'll close it out, go on to the next image. For this one, let's open the chicken JPEG. Pull it down to Photoshop, open up, Here's another way of adjusting the brightness and contrast. We'll go to Image, excuse me, yeah, Image, Adjustments, and then the Exposure will allow us to adjust the lights and darks and also the offset and gamma correction. To do this, choose the little color picker on the right-hand side and then click on the white part of the top right-hand side of your plate, right there. That'll set the highest point for the custom exposure. Set the gamma correction to be about 1.25. We'll adjust the offset just a little bit to bring back some of the details. Now if you go too quickly you can see you get it way way off. So just a little bit to bring back some of the better details that looks good for that one. You can say OK and we can save this one as a TIFF. File, Save As. Choose TIFF, do save. 